Hi. Um, I promised to do a little video for Palmeray or according to Palmeray's post about the Venetia journal and how hard it is to find a journal that you're really into. Um, well, like I said, I too have a Venetia journal. Um, this one is from 2008 and um, Pamela Ray wrote that she was a bit disappointed about the bleeding in the paper and I can't find anywhere what kind of... <laughs> my dog is coming here for some attention. Um, I couldn't find anywhere what kind of paper it is. I don't have uh, that little piece of paper anymore that says what it is. Um, but it is definitely, I think... Um, Maybe it is drawing paper, but I think it's thicker than 200 grams per square meter. I think this one is somewhat thicker, and um, I can't. It, it it didn't buckle a lot at all. I think. Look, this is, for example, a page that I made using watercolors, and um, well, I I made this page very wet, and it's totally flat. And it didn't bleed at all, not even on the on, on the back side. And there are a couple of there are so many pages, like here with the with the Indian inks, there was no bleeding at all, nothing. Here the owl, oh, I stuck something on the other side, but um, I can show you pages that have no bleeding, like this one for instance. Here is all Indian ink, and there is no bleeding on this end. Here is watercolor, no bleeding on that side. So, I don't know, maybe they changed the type of paper. Possible. Oh, here I've got this page. If anything should, should bleed, it would have to be this, because for this, I used my empty printer cartridges. Um, there are Canon cartridges, and after they are so-called empty, you can just slap them onto the paper, and then you get these dots of ink and they are really liquid. They, they lay on, lie on top of the paper as um, a, a drop. So if anything should have bled, it should have to be this. But as you can see, I didn't stick anything on the other side here. Nothing at all. But the paper is fairly... It feels like cardstock. So I think this is 300 grams per square meters. Maybe it is drawing paper. There is no... Um, it doesn't have... Um, texture it's 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 very smooth but um, yeah I really love this book so um, when I'm in Antwerp next time at Schleiper Schleiper.com I will definitely look into that because I was very happy to see them again but if they changed the, the quality of paper I wouldn't use them again um, what do I use? Because um, I used this book and uh, books that were very similar. Uh, this was the last one that was available. Um, I bought them before as well. Um, but after this one, when it was no longer available, I had to find something myself. And I tried a couple of books, but I didn't like it. Um, I don't work in acrylics a lot. I do a little bit more nowadays, but um, I need good paper. So... I found out that buying good watercolor uh, journals was impossible here in the Netherlands. Um, I know that um, in the United States and in France and England they are a little bit better available, but here in the Netherlands it's a drama, you can't find them. Um, so I started to buy my own books and for this one, like for most, I use Coptic Stitch. Um, this one is very loosely bound, so um, as you can see, they can move. I don't know if you can see that, but they sure move a lot. They're a little bit too loose to my liking. Um, I make the covers from anything. Bookboard that I do collages on. Usually I make mixed media paintings on my of my covers. Um, this one um, is actually um, canvas board. I um, simply cut the back side off, one side I cut off to fit this uh, book form, this book size. Um, and what I did was I applied a, a layer of 
uh, modeling paste and gesso and I just made some texture in it and then with some fluid acrylics or some diluted acrylics I, uh, I quickly painted uh, a mixed media painting onto it and I kind of like that because this makes me own the book you know the book I own the covers um, books like these they are really fantastic if you have them I mean you can just simply take them anywhere with you and the quality of the binding is good and you know they're really lovely but still this is really mine for the inside of this book I used Tisha Moore's workshop of making um, a journal signatures I think they're called signatures or chapters it's a set of pages this I think I believe it's called a signature right um, what Tisha Moore does in that tutorial is really nice is she cuts up one big sheet of watercolor paper into different sizes and then binds them together in a in a quirky kind of way that um, you know it gives you f uh, how do you say the fold outs so that's really nice you know um, it, it is a change here is a small fold out here was a bigger fold out I hope you can all see this because I can see uh, the screen of my camera now um, and I really like that um, I also do normal binding so I just make regular signatures where none of the pages have a fold out um, and that is an advantage because look when I put this one um, into my bookcase it's really thick on this end and really narrow on that end and after a while when you have about 10 of these journals um, in a row um, it sort of starts looking messy <laughs> it's totally unimportant of course but um, I like it better when they're when they're even <laughs> um, the type of paper I use I've, uh, I've been asked um, this is Canson Montval, and this is 300 grams per square meter. Um, this is very um, smooth paper. It has very, very fine texture, and um, there is a lot of paper out there, but the Fabriano paper that comes for the same price has a problem in that it, when you fold it, it will start tearing. Um, Canson Montval paper allows you to fold it without ever tearing. I have had this kind of paper for about 10 years and my journals from 10 years ago that have been opened and closed a lot by my students, they still work like a charm. So um, for me I found out after a long period of trying out different kinds of paper that Canson Montval was both the best paper um, and it was it is very available too because I also have paper sheets that will set me back about I think about nine dollars per sheet and that is about 50 by 75 centimeters or something um, and I think this this is about one two three four five this is five sheets so that would have set me back about uh, a lot of money and for this, I pay only two, two, two and a half dollars per sheet, I think. So that's very affordable. Um, and I like that because, um, in the first place, it's good enough for watercolor, for any medium. It will take any medium like a charm. Um, but secondly, um, with very expensive paper, I feel scared to ruin it. And I it just inhibits me in my process. So... You know, I th for me it's good to just um, to just take a very affordable piece of paper. This is the uh, a painting I showed you earlier on. This is uh, some sketching I did. Uh, this is some lab. This is a, a Carla Sondheim thing. Uh, this is an experiment that I did with some um, some materials. Um, this is a fun thing because here I did an experiment as well, um, one that I like very much um, and I keep going back to it because I'm, uh, I really would like to do this again, <laughs> however, I forgot to write down what I did. So um, I'm just going to have to try and figure the process out all over again. I'll make it a quick flip through for you. This is a page I never finished. I must have felt really strong and powerful at the time, but I never finished it, and 
well, this page needs to be finished on another moment, but it's a journal, so I feel I can only finish it when I feel very powerful and, and like a winner again. These are pages that were about my um, struggle with gouache. Um, I am, you know, watercolor comes naturally to me. I'm a, a big fan of watercolor. And I figured that since gouache is the opaque version of watercolor, I should be good at that too. But unfortunately, it don't work that way. So me and gouache, we have, uh, we have, uh, we don't have a good relationship. One of the uh, one of the um, downsides of this kind of uh, flaps in a journal is that when you work, um, it is easier to stain. Um, so if you want to keep your work pristine for publication or whatever, then this kind of fold-out journal comes with a few extra risks. Um, of damaging your work. Um, these were nice techniques as well. But this is what I wanted to show you. I don't know if you can see how big this page is. It folds out on two sides, so it's really, really big. And unfortunately, I ruined this page when I had inked my letters and I wiped my uh, sleeve over it. So I, I'm still a bit gutted. But I think we're going to finish it anyway because um, I still think this is going to be a really nice page in the end when it's finished. Um, these are experiments. Um, like I wrote, um, I often um, work uh, in the style of, people, of other people. I imitate their work. I don't copy it. I just, I just try to carry out their technique once or sometimes twice. And, you know, I borrow one or two elements of it, but then I quickly let go again and I go on in my own fashion. This is Tisha Moore, who did the stone piles a couple of times, and I really like them because I like the colorfulness and the different texture in paper. This is um, Flora Bali, or at least what I thought was her technique. <coughs> it turns out that she does it slightly differently. Um, this collaboration page from me and my daughter, another gouache fight that worked better this time though. Uh, these are some typical journal pages for me, a face with a story. And this is where it got interesting because this is where I let go for the first time of my typical female image um, and I started painting a face and um, I really like this one. But I've got this really crazy one too. It's a very this this page. Well, you know the story. You know this is a story from 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 A to Z. From A to Z. Um, this is a Carla Sonheim uh, tutorial. This is again a technique I borrowed from somebody else, like this one. Um, sometimes I go into my, into the local library and I just uh, try and find some books that I like that are easy and I'm going to study a technique that somebody has been doing. And, you know, I do one page or two pages or, or sometimes a little bit more. And then later on I incorporate that technique into my own pages for... Uh, this This is not a real copy, but this is... This, this could be uh, called a copy because... This has little of my own inspiration. This was just a technique training um, and some fun. Um, I can credit the um, artist too. This was uh, Beatrice Alemania, uh, A Child, What is a Child? Um, that's the book that I borrowed this from. And, you know, normally I would never ever publish it, but this for the video, now you see it. So I can credit who did it. Um, I like that to credit people. Then I make these really, really strange faces. I like strange faces. <coughs> I also um, like writing in French. This is when I bought um, a, a, a giant rabbit. We have a huge rabbit, a really huge rabbit. Um, this is um, a very uh, personal story with, again, you know, these textures. Um, here is my very intense story that I showed you earlier, and this is the sequel. In this journal, I fought a lot of demons. 
um, this is an illustration that I did um, or a sketch for an illustration that I did and I well it it happened to coincide with the situation in my life at that time but as you can see a downside of making Coptic stitch journal is that um, you easily contaminate your previous pages when you work when you paint later on in the story so that might be something to consider mixed media training some more mixed media training this one I really like because I don't know if you can see it but there is this this transparent layers on top of each other I like it a lot and that's when this is training and colors and composition and mixed media and that's when we get to the end and where I can still go on for one signature so that's it if you have any questions don't uh, don't hesitate to ask and uh, I might do another video bye thank you for watching